This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, I have a sermon, but I, I have a, a part of the reading that we read, um, the first one from Isaiah, that talks about God who is going to bring lots of joy for the people. Joy as when you bring in a good harvest. I think I get that. But joy as people sharing plunder. Somehow, that seems more, something more like a pirate kind of Easter than, than ours. And I'm always puzzled by that because the scriptures are not always what we want them to be. We want God to uh, have, a sense, have us develop a sense of joy that comes from something that would aim us toward doing wonderful things for other people. But it comes with this sense of um, it's just like when you're sharing plunder, dividing plunder. On the other hand, tomorrow when we get together with the grandchildren, we will be seeing exactly what that dividing plunder looks like. Maybe it's not so far off. The mystery of this night is that the son who was given, the child who was born in the manger is not what we would have him to be. It isn't what we would want it to be. It isn't exactly like uh, our greatest romantic ideas or courier and ives. It's what God has given to us in the midst of a world that has always been messy and dangerous and a scary place. What we've been given is an invitation to participate in a mystery, and a mystery where God is acting in the world, and it's not altogether obvious what's going to come of it. Now, as a Christian, as someone who has preached on this for many years, um, I know what everything says is supposed to happen, but I don't know that it's always a logical, um, it's a, a logical process that everything happens. It's a mystery. And I think that there are several points where we are invited to participate in the mystery. Um, one of the things that uh, we would like the baby to be is we'd like everything to be fine. For all of the children that we had, the three children that we had, for children that anyone has here, you want the baby to be fine. We want everything to go well. We want the family to be secure. But the family of Jesus was anything but secure. Things were anything but fine. Much like the circumstance for people bringing children into the world today, where they're is not security, things are not fine, and the world's an incredibly dangerous place for children. But that's part of the mystery. It's through that child who came into the world in such a dangerous time and place that God has chosen to bring joy to the world and has chosen to teach us something about ourselves and about God. In our liturgy tonight, we have a variety of places where we get to touch that mystery and touch it in ways that aren't necessarily uh, what we'd expect. For example, the scripture, as I, as I mentioned, um, we have all of the things that we expect. Uh, we have the flowers, the decorations for Christmas. We've read the Christmas story, but then all of a sudden, things that don't really fit that Christmas story, warfare and plunder, are 
are present in the middle of it, and it's a mystery that causes at least me to ponder and to puzzle. When we get to the middle of the service, closer to the middle of the service, there'll be an opportunity for a confession of sin, and we leave from the confession of sin and the absolution, we go right to passing the peace. Well, if there's anything more mysterious in the Episcopal Church than passing the peace, confession is probably it. But the reality is, is that the confession and absolution and the passing of the peace are intimately connected. Because when we, when we are honest about who we are, and we're honest about how we are in the world, and that there are broken relationships that are part of our history, and that some of them may be hurting us right now, some of them, we may be the person who was hurtful. Um, when we begin to attend to that, we become more and more a part of the mystery of what God is doing through Christmas. And when the absolution is given, the first thing that the congregation is invited to do is to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Now, I think not just in this Episcopal church, but in churches all across the world, not just Episcopal churches, people think that passing the peace is kind of like an early coffee hour where everybody's supposed to get up and you kind of get badges for how many people you can shake their hand and how far away they are when you do it. But in fact, the passing of the peace is intimately connected with this idea of being honest about who we are, being assured of God's love and forgiveness, and being asked to share a sign of that love and forgiveness with the people who are closest to you. Not necessarily the people who are closest in heart, but in distance. Passing the peace is a way that we practice what Jesus began in the manger. Another place that we are invited to participate in the mystery is when we receive communion. When we receive the bread and the wine the bread or the wine, when we receive the body of Christ at God's invitation, we're brought directly into that mystery with Jesus. We're invited to participate fully in everything that Jesus did. We're called to think about everything that Jesus was, and we're called to be taught who we should be by how Jesus is calling us. Every single person who takes communion is included in that. We're all invited to be a part of the mystery of Christmas, the mystery of God's incarnation, and the mystery of how God wants to care for, interact with, and love the world that ultimately God created. And finally, the last mystery is when you're invited to go into the world uh, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit or go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. It's another part of that same mystery where uh, you, you've heard, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. This is just the opposite. What happens here should go out to all the world. The mystery of Jesus, the mystery of God in the flesh, the mystery of the fact that we aren't defined by only the best things that we see in ourselves or the worst. God accepts us as we are and desires to bring us into fullness of our own life and ability to be what God has made us to be we're invited to take that out to the rest of the world. So as we receive Jesus as a present, we are invited to take that gift out and give it farther and farther to the world.
Now at the previous service this evening, I had somebody coming out and when there's lots of people going through the line, somebody wanted to have a little bit of a conversation. And it's, it's a little awkward on, in big services like this, but the person said, if I haven't been to church very much, am I bad? And I thought, whoa. I said, you're here, and you can come again. And it's all looking forward, not looking back. But I actually think that his question was perhaps one of the most honest questions that I've had from somebody who came to a service. I'm not going to quiz anybody on what, what they got out of the sermon, but the idea that somehow someone participated in the service and it made them question themselves. Am I doing what I ought to be doing? How is God calling me right now? Now, sometimes the answers aren't always pleasant, but the reality is, is that the greatest gift we can have, the greatest gift we can share, is to participate full on in the mystery of God's love for us, God's love for the world, in Jesus Christ, and taking that gift out into the world for the Christmas gift that our world needs, God's love. Amen.